What is going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday, Bobby Fathom Man, Eric Sheets Haber. I am, uh, you know, I'm a little tilted. I felt like last night we were just talking about a pre-show. I felt like I had a real chance, not necessarily to win the million, but you're feeling pretty good when you're cashing deep and you've got all the Dodgers left, and then there's just no scoring for what seven innings or six innings or whatever that well hell it was. Um, had tons of at bats, and and I and I I liked what I did, and I felt good about it. And then I finished third in the monster on FanDuel with my one entry. So I was a little, I'm a little, I was a little tilted that I didn't actually make money on a night where I felt like I should have made a ton of money because I had Max Muncy as my highest owned player on both sites. And somehow I still didn't get there, but such is life. As we move on to another day sheets. How was, uh, how was the night with Stacy and Ashley and, uh, and dinner in the city? And then we'll, we'll jump into the slate. The winner of the million had three zeros in his lineup. I thought I would let you know that. Yep. Um, and uh, not and and some of them were not cheap. The 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 the, the, the zeros he had. Um, I I myself decided on the five man stack. I was going to a five man stack in the in the big one. My team had the most runs of any team on the board, and I got basically last. So this is the way this is the way baseball works. Um, uh, I got two Q with a couple of things and whatever. So just give me an idea of a uh, of life in sheets world, right? So I just want to let you know. I'm not, not I'm not complaining. This is what I am. So, so talk about working for the people. So last night we had a very, very long dinner. First of all, we sat in, in the rain in traffic. Uh, the Yankees got the day off because of the weather. I, I didn't. Right. So, <laughs> so, so, so we, we walked through traffic two and a half hours, bumper to bumper with all this stuff. Met my daughter at a very nice restaurant in the city, which took two and a half hours. That's the way it goes. Came all the way back here. I got up at five because I had to take care of some hedge fund stuff before I go into work. So then at eight o'clock, I, I, I walk to work. I, I, I walk to work pretty much every day, like, like two and a half miles. Uh, pretty much the only exercise I'm getting right now. But it, yeah, it's plenty for me. And I spoke with my my partner, Jack, on the phone on the, on the phone the entire hour walk about Survivor Pool stuff, like literally a full hour <laughs> of Survivor Pool stuff. Walking in at nine o'clock, I had to do more hedge fund stuff to prepare for the open. And I spent like an hour like yelling at people over email that were just pissing me off about, about different things. I mean, just all my, all kinds of variants were was coming into me at the same time. Uh, we had, I had to get the projections kind of loaded up for today for, for both baseball slates. I had to tweak the NFL slate. Um, we got some, some, actually some new features on my spreadsheet, which I, which I uploaded. I redid the, the, the that spreadsheet. And today what we have going on is we have, we're doing a, a 12 o'clock noon, a preview of the late slate. It's like noon right here of the main slate. Then after this, we're going straight in to at about 1.30 maybe. We'll do, or wherever we can do it, we'll do like kind of like a live preview of the 3 p.m. slate because at 2 p.m. I have to leave because I'm doing our first Survivor podcast with Brave Jayhawk from 2 to 3. So I'll be doing that from 2 to 3, following which I was going to do a SaberSim uh, video with you on, on how to use SaberSim with the NFL. But we had to reschedule that. So that's no problem. So at three o'clock, I'm going to do my MMA preview slate uh, at, at three o'clock, which is fine. Because at four o'clock, I have to um, I have to walk home, okay, because it takes another hour to get home. So then at 5 p.m., I'll get there just in time for us to actually do the Saber Sim video, which we're going to do from five to six. Now, fortunately, I do have six to seven that I can, like, eat with my wife. Because then at seven, I have this NFL, this, this one big – so the big fantasy football draft I'm doing following which I am going to have a drink. So that that's, that's a, that's, that's my day. And I'm ready. Like you need one. It sounds like you need one, buddy. That's a, that's a long I am, day. I am ready. Where's my drink? Let's, let's I, am re- I, am, I am ready to get into uh, the, the, uh, what are we doing? The, the main slate for today. All right. I, me too. And uh, look, man, it's, it's, it was, it was, the, it was, it was one of those nights too, for me, like where I felt like, God, you know, I, I didn't win and I, I didn't end up winning money. And I actually felt like the best though about my lineups. I felt like I had, I, I just cannot believe how sometimes, you know, just the variance of things work. It's frustrating, but I'm, I'm ready to get into today. I'm excited for this weekend for football. I'm thinking about going to the Rams game tomorrow night, which Ooh. will be really fun. Um, still trying to figure that one out. Uh, that's pretty, pretty good opener with the Rams and bills. I don't know if you can get a better one than that. Nope. So kind of, kind of want to, want to, want to check that out. So with that said, let's jump into today's slate. Um, I actually think this is a pretty decent slate for a little for a small slate, and I don't think we're going to have major weather issues as of right now. So that's makes it a little bit better. 
but I think there's some options here of ways to get a little bit different, which it's, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to do on these slates. So thought I would throw that out there. Um, let's jump right into to, to game by game here and, uh, and, and talk about it. What are you, what are your thoughts on this Toronto Baltimore game here? Um, I'm, I'm definitely interested in, in, in the hitting here uh, specifically. Well, the Toronto side, but I have them rated pretty high but it's a kind of a, a weird bullpen game. You know, neither of these guys are bad, you know, like Wells and Kramer and Kramer. That's who I have. I have, I have Wells as an opener and then Kramer as, as a, it's, as a long reliever coming out. And Kramer really like, he just pitched six innings the other day. Yeah, I know. I, I'm not exactly sure. So um, it, it's kind of a weird setup, but nonetheless, I still have Toronto rated pretty high on my list. I have them rated kind of, I think second rate. Um, so they uh, they're definitely in play, and Manoa is um, you know he, he's he's become like sort of Max Fried, you know what I mean? Like he's become like a a guy who's been become not as much of a fastball, as much of a strikeout a great guy. Pitcher. <laughs> yeah, he's just like a great pitcher. Yeah. So at ten five, I think um, he's not going to really be at the top of my list today. Um, so for me, it's going to be probably some Toronto, and. Um, I thought your Baltimore call was going to win all the win all the dough yesterday for somebody, but it, but other teams I didn't, didn't quite get that. there. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I guess this game is 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 not the most exciting for me. But I, I do have Toronto as, as rated second right now. Um, waiting to get your opinion on that. Yeah, like I'm still confused about what they're doing pitching wise, so I want some clarity. I have Toronto as as one of the stacks that I'm considering. But if 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 it's gonna be this exact combination of Wells and, and Kremer, a little less interested. Um, one thing I would say though is that uh Dante, I'm sorry, Bo Bichette, not Dante Bichette. Dante Bichette, that's a good one. <laughs> um Bichette is a is a streak hitter and tends to go through extreme variance on both sides. He has he has a month where he can't hit a home run, then he goes and he hits well, he hits four in the last two days. Um I really think that catching on to guys like this when they're hot are is important. I know that it sounds like a ridiculous thing, but in general, I like playing. I like playing hitters that are streak hitters. He swings so hard that when he's making contact and when he's seeing the ball, he hits a lot of home runs. He hits the ball really, really hard. And uh, I, I do just want to point him out because on smaller slates, I like to point out the one offs a little bit more. And he is one of the one of the one offs, regardless of of who ends up pitching that I'm definitely going to to be playing probably in my, in my big buy-in lineups tonight. Um, and I don't think you need to like, again, I'm going to probably end up stacking, but I don't think you need to make a five man stack on a six game slate. I just don't think you need to. Um, so Bichette is a guy who stands out to me and, and I'll, I'll get back to you. I'll get back on live for, for what I'm going to do with the rest of Toronto, depending on what happens with this pitching. Cause it seems very strange for them to do what they're looks like they're planning to do right now. All right. You ready to move on to the next one? I am ready for some Javier Assad talk. That that's that's okay. that's 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 what I'm ready to talk about. Um, so I don't know what the weather's like. I don't know whatever where it was going to going to be. Uh, I did. I I got off the Cubs yesterday. Whatever. Um, today, first of all, let me just look at the hitting first. Um, I actually do have the Cubs again, as as if not the top one of the top value stacks on the board. Uh, and, and the way I have this, this slate ranked, I actually have Chicago first and Cincinnati second when it comes on, on just the value pieces. Right. Right. Um, they don't, you know, have the same raw, raw upside as some of these other teams, but they do, they, they, they are all cheap or probably because they all stink. Okay. That's probably the, the idea. Um, however, uh, I, I don't know who this is, but this guy Assad is showing up as like a pretty good value for me. And I look at just the game log and I see um one game, you know, not not that great in his last start, right? But I don't know, five innings before that. I don't know. I, I'm looking. Well, what is this here? It says here, it says he pitched five think, scoreless innings. Yeah, he just pitched. Well, that was before that. Um he he pitched uh he pitched just the one inning though the other day against St. Louis. Right, um right. so he's sort of like I don't know how how much of a leash we've got here. I, think I don't know either. The most we can expect is 85 pitches. And it's interesting because while I'm considering him, I'm sort of wondering if this might be a good spot to stack Cincinnati. Um, well, sure. That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, look, the, the pricing of everything else like makes it really tempting. 
And I do, I'm going to go out and like, I, I thought it was going to be a limb until I looked at the ownership. I actually think Mike Miner's in play. I, I know this is, yeah. this is what everybody thought laughed at me for a couple of weeks ago or whatever, or a couple of starts ago when it was against Washington. I, I was like, I really like Miner. I think I'm going to end up playing him. And I played him in one of my two big buy-ins and it, one of the few things I did well in this last month, um, he put up 26 fantasy points. He still has, he can get by a really bad offense if everything goes right. And he's got enough strikeout upside to where it's, it's, it's somewhat reasonable, but honestly, both of these stacks are really in play. Um, just a slight wind blowing in. It's not really hot in Chicago. So not a huge bump or anything to these bats, but the prices of this game, man, are, are going to make it really hard to ignore both sides of the offense. At the same time, I think both pitchers are totally in play and I'm leaning a little bit more towards minor. Um, but that's where I'm at in this game. I think this is a, a spot where you can get some cheap bats. If I want to, you know, Friedel, Fraley, uh, probably Framil Reyes, Ian Happ are probably my favorite four players from this game. But again, just going to throw out some, uh, some stuff because even on a big slate last night and, and while Atlanta was so great and, and, and wonderful, you, you could really have gotten, I mean, like you said, the, the winner of the million had zero, had three zeros in his lineup. There's a lot of ways you can get creative of tr trying to take your favorite plays here. And I think that, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go through them as we go through Fraley, Friedel, Hap, and uh, Reyes. That yeah. So as I said, so, so um, depends on which way you want to go. I do have Cincinnati, and again, I do have Cincinnati and Chicago rated literally one, two, as far as values go. So if you do end up playing, paying for these, some of these 10 K nine K pitchers we'll talk about, then, then you probably want to consider those. Um, the Assad thing, again, there's plenty of reasons to not like him, too. I mean, he doesn't strike anybody out. Um, and he walks more people than he strikes them, which is it's just that's that's certainly not good. Yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> that's certainly not not good. But, no. but, but um, but uh, I listen, I want to see the wind, I want to see all that stuff. Um, and these are these are two pretty bad, bad teams, I think. So um yep. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, we'll obviously we'll look later, but but right now again, Reds and Reds and Chicago, top of the values chart. Uh, and I agree with Miner. I think he's he's in play. I think Asad's in play too. I think this is this is listen. This is DFS, man. You have two crap teams. You could end up winning the slate, and you don't even know whether you're going to be playing the pitchers or the hitters. So that's uh, that's, that's the happens. way it's going to be in this game. Yep, hundred percent. Although um, I will say one other thing about the Assad, um, his his he's been against good teams. I mean, he he didn't give up a run in five innings at at Toronto. You know what I mean? And that was despite, I guess, he got in a lot of trouble. You know what I mean? If you give up four hits and two walks over five innings, I mean, that's, you know, you're 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 managing the base pass a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and St. Louis, I mean, four four innings pitch, four hits. Now he mowed him down. He's got four walks, you know? So he worked out of trouble, to say the least, you know, without really striking anybody out. Um, but it's not like they threw him in against the Tigers, you know? He's, he, they gave him shots against against good teams. Maybe he's not bad. This seems like a very obvious bet the over game to me. <laughs> nice. It's, it's, it's nice. an eight over under with two of the worst bullpens in baseball and a, just a, a, an endless amount of question marks about the starting pitching. I think right. this is a time where you take advantage and, and you, you bet the over and just that's probably the best bet in this game. <laughs> that's all I can say. Um, but but, you know, we, we get into the St. Louis thing and and I, I'm with I'm with I'm, I'm with the I, I'm, I'm Montgomery on this slate. Fine. Uh, I don't know where he's going to end up for me, but we've seen what lefties can do to Washington. And uh, for a while, I mean, Quintana was awful last night. It looked like, and I, I think he had like one fantasy point through like three, and a, three and a third or something. And then ended up somehow getting there. Um, yeah. I'm okay with Montgomery. And then the, I think that it, very naturally St. Louis is one of the better teams to stack uh, for what it's worth. I don't, I, I do believe that Corey Abbott has like some talent, uh, but I, I definitely, I mean, it's, it's St. Louis is definitely looks like raw points wise. Are they, I mean, either yeah. the top or second top yeah. stack in the, yeah. on the slate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a matter of how much shock do you want to eat? And I'm probably going to on a small slate, avoid it some, to some extent, but when I'm looking at the early ownership, I don't see it quite as high owned as I thought. I, I have the Cubs the highest note. <laughs> okay. Well then in that case, I think I feel good about playing St. Louis instead. You've got the cheap bats in, Donovan and Dickerson. And one thing I want to point out that I didn't point out uh, yesterday, uh, 
there's no they don't have a lefty reliever in Washington's bullpen, which really negates this this pinch hit risk for the lefties. And 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 these guys are legitimate always a pinch hit risk. So you put Gorman, Dickerson, Newtbar, and Donovan, and basically lock them in because they're. I mean, it, maybe they could bring them at pools and against a righty or something. We'll see who what the lineup comes out like. But I do think that all those guys. Uh, the St. Louis lefties are are really uh, really strong plays because of the no lefties in the bullpen and they're very cheap and you don't have to worry about the pinch hit risk so much. Yeah, I mean as you as you alluded to, I do have St. Louis Rangers the top uh, raw point stack on the board, um, and um, you know, and I also have them as one of the chalkiest. So I, I happen to 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 like uh, Montgomery today. I don't have him at I don't have him at the top. Or the top play, um, I have uh, someone else all the way at the top, and then I have him close to Darvish for for a second. Um, that's 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 where I kind of at, I'm at with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and yeah, St. Louis. I mean, look, uh, Dickerson twenty five hundred, Newt Bar thirty five hundred. Uh, those kind of stand out as the as the best values. Um, but then, oh, like you said, Donovan too twenty eight hundred. Wow. So yeah, that's why you can get to all these guys. You can even afford to 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 pay the eight thousand for Goldschmidt or whatever he is nowadays, and, and still play and still still get them in because all these other guys are so cheap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's we just named like what four? Th- I'm sorry, three value stacks that make a lot of sense. So right. I'm I'm totally into it. Into it. Um, Texas and Houston. Houston is the other top scoring offense that you would have as, as is Javier, you know what I mean? Like as uh, is Javier, yeah, Christian Javier. And uh, I'm okay with both sides of it. I think that if I have to spend money, I guess Houston does make a lot of sense. Um, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm sort of trying to find a reason not to, I, I believe that Reagan's is going to be good, but you throw a lefty against tough, this tough Houston spot, team. tough spot. Right? Yeah. It just feels like, feels like we probably should be doing some business with Houston uh even in the lefty lefty i don't mind using the lefties the problem is they're, they're not it's not like you're, they're going to be a surprise to anyone uh trey mancini is probably going to be one of the lower owned options here assuming that he's in the lineup batting near the bottom so i will say mancini is my favorite play from houston because of the ownership assuming that he is in fact in the lineup and batting sixth or seventh um but i i, I do think a houston stack is very natural and i think javier is obviously a very strong play I mean, Altuve, Bregman, uh, Pena. Yep. You know, I, I, you don't need to play Guriel. Um, yep. <laughs> Man, Man, Mancini. I mean, these guys are all, you know, yep. all, all real strong points. Absolutely. Um, for what it's worth, I do think there is some – I do think that Valdez is uh, – not Valdez, excuse me, um, Alvarez – it does seem like there's something wrong with him a little bit. He doesn't, hasn't swung the bat well in a long time. Uh, there's a lot of injury talks. I don't know why they don't just sit him. They don't have anything to play for, but uh, may, may, maybe stacking without Alvarez is a way to get a little different, but not, not probably different enough. All right. Cleveland and KC um, sheets. I'm deciding what to do with this game. I need to know what's happening with Granky. Um, but it seems like naturally you, you, you put a pitcher who can't strike anybody out against a team that doesn't ever strike out. Uh, it seems like Cleveland is, uh, is extremely viable here and they don't have the, uh, the, the run projection you'd quite expect. It's a little hotter in KC than it is most places today, 83 degrees. Um, I, I, I think that you could, again, you could argue for both sides of the, of the stacks here. Um, trying to dig a little bit more into what I think about the Cody Morris thing. I'm not going to play him because you don't really need the value, but I'm not sure I entirely want to stack against him, although I'm considering it. Um, I, I, I do like Cleveland for what it's worth. And I think that I'm probably going to, uh, I, I'm a little surprised at how low the projection is on Cleveland today. So I, I think Cleveland would be the the stack that I actually, with all the ones we talked about, along with maybe the Blue Jays, depending on who's actually pitching for Baltimore the ones that I feel the best about uh, factoring in ownership and everything else. So I actually, I, I, I do like Cleveland quite a bit here and I'm not, I don't think I'm going to end up getting into the pitching, but uh, what are we, what, what are your thoughts? Do you, do you have any, do you have anything with, I, I think Cody Morris is actually like talent. Like, I think that it's, it wouldn't be a bad play, but do we actually need any value? There's such great value at hitting. I don't know. 
I just it's a great, it's a, that's exactly the point, you know. So, so I, I, have, I have Cody Morris basically on par with with Assad. I have them both like pretty good, very good point per dollar plays. Not great, but like they're pretty good mm-hmm. point per dollar plays. And you probably don't need to play it. Um, you almost never, you almost never need to play these guys. Um, right. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to. And as far as the Cleveland the Granky thing, I mean, you know, it's it's just it's it's um. It's the same every every time. I mean, like you 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 want to you want to stack against Granky? That's great, and I've I've done it before, and I do it a lot, and 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 I load the bases, and then he throws four Ephus pitches to my best hitter, and next thing you know, they're out of the inning with no no runs. I, the guy's a freaking magician. You know what I mean? I, I, I you know, listen. He you can't be you can't be in the league throwing forty miles an hour. You know what I mean? Like without having something, you know, um, unless you're you know eventually you know. You run out of tricks, and then you're Dallas Keuchel, and you get you know released, you know. But 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 to to date, I mean, Granky still is just that freaking dude that 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 people try to go after, and they're just never successful. Um, with that said, probably take another shot. You know what I mean? Like, I'll probably play these guys. I'll probably play uh, Ramirez. I'll probably play a sort of overpriced Jimenez, maybe. Um, and. Uh, Quan, I like playing him. All these, all these dudes. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a, how often can the guy do it? I, I, I guess for twenty five years. You know, I don't know well how else to say. I mean, props to him. And again, I always, I always, I always mention this when we when we talk about him. Do you ever want to like just go down to like an incredible rabbit hole? Like, if, if you guys haven't done this yet, like go like look up YouTube videos of like Zach Greinke, and like this is like whole like life and career going all the way back to like no, little league and stuff the guy is like freaking out there like just like you never it's a whole different never, level like a bizarre human being but you know what's funny is a lot of the dodgers muncie turner and all these guys they give him credit for muncie uh, justin turner that is they give him credit for being the one who basically turned their careers around a lot because he studied every pitch that they took and this is uh, he just a, he's as you say, like he's got enough tricks to where maybe I guess he doesn't get you know completely crushed here. It's, it's it is weird to see this run total. Uh, all these run totals look very low to me, um, and this is this is probably one of the more alarming ones that I would say that I could see this game having getting a little bit wild. Uh, favorite plays from the game for me are Melendez Perez, um, and then I really like uh, Jose Ramirez, obviously, uh, Oscar Gonzalez. Uh, Tyler Freeman would be maybe a little bit of a lower owned option down at the bottom of the order. But I think that there's, there's, you know, just things to like, and I'm I'm just making a list of about 20 hitters that I'm going to be cycling through without really worrying too much about stacking on this slate personally. It's concerning to me that Casey is not showing up more because they always show up for me, you know, as, as, as a, as a cheap stack. And um, they're just, they're just not getting to the point of like Chicago, Cincinnati with respect to the value or not, not to mention the cheap St. Louis guys. Right. Right. Um, so, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get to that. Um, and I'll probably end up, uh, with a, with a frustrated, uh, Cleveland stack and we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right. Um, uh, my favorite stack on the, on the night. I know, I know he's been pretty good. Um, well, okay. He was pretty good for a little bit. He had a struggle his last time against Philly. I, I, I think if there was one team that I had to stack, even though I've named a few other good ones, I think that it would probably be the Padres, all things considered. But mostly, I I want to highlight Soto Machado as a place to, places to spend up, and I think that uh, you could mix in anybody else. But those two are my priority plays in this game, and I like Darvish just fine. Um, I think I prefer Javier to Darvish, and that's where I'm at right now. How yeah, I'll throw in Josh Bell and Cronenworth to the uh, to the San Diego mix. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting a uh, a point per dollar projection on um, this Louis Luis Campanos or uh, whatever his name is. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, the catcher. Okay, okay, not a big deal. Okay, um, I don't know if he's playing or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I have San Diego right alongside Toronto as as you know as 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 somebody worth playing. Um, and I agree with Darvish. I think he's, you know, right up there alongside of, of um, what's his name? Um, the second guy I mentioned, whoever it was. But, but but the thing is, 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 as you mentioned yesterday, which I didn't listen to when I was playing Musgrove, is Arizona is like no joke right now. I mean, <laughs> Arizona is not the team that you want to play pitchers against. I mean, the guy, they, they every, every freaking game, it seems. Yep. Um, 
you know, Musgrove barely, barely survived that game, if, if, if at all. I mean, it's like three, it's like one nothing, two nothing, four nothing. I mean, they just got got run out of the building apparently, but it wasn't even like by a lot of home runs, just by just getting just freaking peskied. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> he just got peskied right into right into oblivion. So you know, pesky teams against Darvish are kind of annoying. You know, so so mm-hmm. uh, so I'm not I'm not gonna be trampling over everybody to play Darvish. I mean, I I I, I kind of prefer. The, the, I kind of prefer the Javier if I had to if I had to pick, um, and I'll probably I, I have a little more more faith in Montgomery in his in his matchup in his spot than than uh, than uh, than than Darvish. I mean, just uh, you know, Padres, uh, it's not Padres. Arizona's doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't screw around nowadays. So I think I'm going to put Darvish third. I'm going to I think I'm going to put Javier and then Montgomery, uh, and, and I'll put Darvish third. I, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm good with that. I think that it's it's a mix for me. I do think that a lower own Manoa could pay off just because that's true. So that's true. Consistent. So, um, I, I I have that same thing, and and I don't know if we're gonna need to spend down at pitching because of all this value we just have gone through. You know, right. right. Um, but I have my 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 core my core is a lo- is a large one right now, but I'm gonna narrow it down. But Bichette, Friedel, Fraley, Hap, Reyes, Donovan, Gorman, Dickerson, Newtbar. Mancini, Altuve, Witt, J. Ram, uh, Machado, Soto, Melendez, and Perez. That, that that's just sort of everybody. I'll, every lineup I build is going to just be so, sort of. I, so, I, so I have a question, and I, I think of Friedel when I think of this. Um, so when when you are trying to come up with one offs, right? You you always try to find guys that are either you know either stolen base upside or home run upside, or, or the, with a combination. Well, possibility of both would be nice, also. Mm-hmm. And, and when you do that, do you kind of like, um, like just kind of know by instinct which those guys are, or do you actually look at some of the underlying stats? Because I, so for me, like I, I barely you know know one from the other. And so what I'll do is if I see a guy who literally who is uh, kind of a, let's say I'm looking for a one off, and I'm trying to figure out who that's going to be, I'll look at my projection, I'll see who's a good kind of point per dollar play, and then I'll literally go into their game log and say, okay. Does it look like they got some home runs? It looks, sounds good to me, you know. Or, or does it look like they like Nick Madrigal's profile, or 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 Fletcher's, or or no. somebody else like that 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 just never does anything like that? Well, by this um, point of the season, outside of a few September call ups, I usually have a pretty good feel for the actual player. Okay. Friedel and and uh, specifically Friedel and uh, excuse me, why did I forget the other name? Um, Fraley both have power and speed upside. I feel like. Um, okay. that's why they, that makes sense for them to me. Also they're cheap and they're, but they're not the, they're not the magical guys who, you know, go 500 to 600 at bats without a home run. These, you know, uh, Friedel's hit what four home runs in the last five games. Um, I think it's somewhere around there. Um, and, and Fraley has, Fraley has enough power and speed combination to where I'm, I'm definitely at least interested a little bit in those guys. Have you, have you noticed anybody this year? Um, again, I really haven't been paying attention. I've been working on so much of this stuff. I haven't really been paying attention to results too much. Have, have you noticed anybody in baseball that I kind of like refer to as like the Joey Votto of last year? Is there anybody who's like really upped his, I guess, daily fantasy game? You know what I mean? Is there anybody yeah, that Gold, like, Gold, to- Goldschmidt? Goldschmidt. Okay. Yeah. Gold, Goldschmidt. I mean, he's been the second best hitter in baseball behind Aaron Judge. Now it's a pretty big gap between the two of them, but he's been absolutely unbelievable this year and returned to the Goldschmidt that we used to see all the time. But he's the one who stands out as being the the guy who really, I mean, he's it's a huge leap over from where he's been the last few years. But I even mean like profile-wise, you know, like it's so funny. I think about what's his name, the guy oh, who changing really, their swing and everything. Yeah. Like who's the guy I made fun of? Like the, the guy that won you all the money a few years ago, even Lewis Brinson, right? Like I always, always use him as an example, right? Of somebody. By the that, way, why aren't we still lo- playing Lewis Brinson? I'm going to talk about that in a play. second. So, so, so. So I made a joke about him, like, oh, listen, you don't want to get too much Lewis Brinson at 2K just because he's 2K, whatever it is. And meanwhile, I saw him the other day, just let off with a home run against like it was nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> just, just, and I'm looking at him, and maybe, I, maybe, so he's changed his profile or something. It, he's he's hit three home runs him. the last two days. Um, uh-huh. and, 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 and the other, the one of the other F were mentioned, that Joe Adele hit a home run last night. Yep. I mean, these guys, these guys get better. These guys learn a little bit. Well, there is pedigree with these guys that they were – really really highly touted prospects at one okay. point and when it starts to come true a little bit i want to be ahead of the curve on jumping yes. on those guys so i i, yeah. I do think there is some there is some merit to that but you I, know, before, it's probably before, not before, before, before we but, leave the, sl- the sleigh i mean i, I some I, mean, I, can't, I can't forget to do this something literally just mentioned i keep forgetting you know that, that alan manoa does 
even though he doesn't seem to show it all that often, he does still have that upside. You yeah. Know, like, and, and and he's probably the best pitcher of all of them. You know, I think, so I think he is the best pitcher of all of them. Yeah. So so don't 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 necessarily dismiss the the best pitcher. You know what I mean? Like right. just, just because he happens to be profiling a little a little bit more uh, Max Freedy than he used to. Yeah. I mean, even with all this said this season, I mean, he and Darvish are basically neck and neck for most fantasy points per game on the slate. And um, and and he has to pitch in the American League. East. So I, I do think he's actually the best pitcher. It is a tough, tough uh, matchup in general with Baltimore these days. But I still will, you know, at one yeah. the ownership of Javier, I'm happy to play him. He's got 25 fantasy points three games in a row. And what, what more do you want? I mean, right. And you've got a guy who like in a must win. Not a must win, but they're they're sort of playing must win ball all the way down the stretch for for them. Whereas Javier could, you know, it could be seven nothing, and they could pull Javier out after like seventy pitches. There's everything's on the board when it comes to Javier. Like he might throw 110, he might throw 75, just because I think that Texas, I mean Houston, doesn't really have a whole lot to play for at this point of the season. So, and I'll yeah. tell you what, other game just kind of like looked. I, I like looking at games like this. Like Manoa, four games back, he lost. They lost four to two to uh, Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, obviously he didn't have his best stuff, right? You know, four hits, four earned runs, four walks even. Yet still, they had him in for 107 pitches. You know what I mean? Like, they, they're they are riding with him. You right. know, like until, until his arm falls off, I mean, he's going to be out there every start. Like, I don't know, his last start, I mean, the game was kind of wrapped up, so they don't really, didn't really have to have. But he, they could have left him in for a complete game if they felt like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, he only pitched 98 pitches, three games into the eighth. But I guess they, you know, it was seven and a third. I don't know whether he got in trouble that inning or. I think he did. I think I think the first two runners got on, and then he struck somebody out, and then that was it. Okay, but uh, but he's like the man, you know what I mean? So they're gonna they're gonna let him pitch, um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's all I have. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and uh, just for 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 what it's worth, I do think I will prioritize Manoa just because the ownership discrepancy. Yeah. Um, and probably play him with Javier in my main lineups because I think there's enough value. But I don't mind if you wanted to substitute that for Darvish. I just think you get a little bit lower ownership on Manoa. And I would rather play the good pitchers today because I don't think that we need to save the money with the uh, the cheapos we mentioned earlier. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, all right. Well, I'll see you guys live at 6 Eastern. And uh, we've got a long day of, of covering a lot of other stuff. So we're going to get to it. And uh, good luck, everybody. We'll hopefully see you at the top of leaderboards.